This week on Case Studies, it's Reddit. Where do they come from? And what's up with this company that's 15 years old that a bunch of people hardly know anything about? We're gonna talk about where they came from, who invested, where they're going, and why it's a very big deal. This week. Reddit. It's basically the front page of the internet. Let's go into where it came from, where it's going, what has happened along the way, and some lessons for you, even if you are operating, and you know what I'm about to say, a t-shirt company in Berlin. Let's go. Reddit was born back in 2005 when Steve Huffman and Alexis Sohanian built the company. It was actually their second idea for a company. The first idea came to them after they spoke to Paul Graham, this guy. Paul Graham was in the midst of getting ready to start Y Combinator, the great incubator accelerator from Silicon Valley. They heard Paul speak, and I think it was University of Virginia, or they were in Boston or something, and they approached him afterwards, and they had an idea for a text message service that could get food delivered to you. Boy, that was 2005. That was a little early. There's a few of those out there now. Well, guess what? They actually got turned down for Y Combinator, and been in talking to Paul, Paul said, hey, you know what? This idea that maybe you've got for this messaging system, maybe it could be basically the front page of the internet. Now remember what was going on in 2005, six and seven. You still had MSN and you had Yahoo very much in their original ramp heyday. I had a Yahoo account, you probably did too, and it wasn't just email, there was actually a homepage and I could set the news that I wanted, give my zip code and it told me what theaters were nearby and what was showing at what time. It was very customizable on a local basis and it really was my front page almost like my newspaper, and that was the genesis that came. Well, Reddit was born, and they got a little bit of seed money, $100,000, which is nothing by today's Silicon Valley standards. Heck, that's a crazy dinner in Silicon Valley these days. And after only a year, they sold. That's right. Reddit was less than one year old, give or take, and they sold. $10 million to Condé Nast. Well, who was Condé Nast? Condé Nast owned Wired Magazine, which is one of the Bibles of Silicon Valley for interesting articles and coverage, along with a lot of other magazines. So it was natural for Condé Nast, owning Wired, paying attention to what's going on in Silicon Valley. They come to these guys, hey, wait, you're posting a lot of information, synthesizing, curating information. Well, that's what we do to make articles on a more advanced basis with high-end writers and editors. We're going to buy you and they bought them for $10 million. Maybe it was 20, there's been a couple numbers floated around, but suffice to say, it was a damn small amount of numbers, and no, that doesn't get a big damn. So here they go, now they're part of Condé Nast, and these guys are there, this thing would continue for about four years, and when Huffman and Ohanian, they leave. Well, so what's going on here? I call this the first chapter, and they sold too soon, in my opinion. And so Reddit was moving along, continuing to evolve. There were things that would go on that were interesting. The subreddit was born. The subreddit was like a community. Uh, there would be uh, also admins. They actually paid on Reddit, and there were moderators like you and me if we were an expert on Formula One or something like that. We could be a moderator pay attention, set the criteria and rules, pull down posts that were wrong. It was really CompuServe, if any of you with gray hair are old enough to remember that, on super steroids coming to the greater online community. Because remember, CompuServe was a single destination dial in BBS, which stands for bulletin board system. And away they go. So at this point, you've, you've got these guys leaving and there is a, a gentleman that uh, stayed with the organization, this guy, Eric Martin. And Eric Martin basically kept the company going from 08 all the way up to 11 or 12. And at that time, Yishan Wong was named CEO and something important happened. After all those years under Condé Nast, there were uh, people talking about that it was a tough place to work, it was corporately bureaucratic, they weren't going so fast, they weren't really innovating because an old school publisher had bought them with a lot of old school ideas and, and was sitting there a lot of time going, what the hell do we do with this thing? So guess what? There wasn't a lot of innovation. No surprise there. At the time of the spin out, they finally got their Series B. Remember I told you what they raised? 100,000? That was it. Then they got the 10 million from Condé Nast, that bought them out. Condé Nast kept it going from then forward, was probably sitting there, how much more money will we pour into this thing, until 
they spin out and they go get $50 million in a Series B. Look at that, nine years after the birth of the company. But this was Silicon Valley elite who knew exactly what they were talking about were among the investors. Ron Conway, Mark Andreessen, Andreessen Horowitz, Snoop, Peter Thiel, and Y Combinator, Sam Altman, all these folks are there. Now, I mentioned Snoop, and what's really interesting about Snoop, Snoop also in invested in Robinhood, and I gotta give a great big call out to Snoop and Aston Kutcher. Those are two celebrities that have invested in a lot of companies and done very well. Take a look at this list for Aston Kutcher. Robinhood, Spotify, Airbnb, Lemonade, Wow, this guy is paying attention and is connected to the right investors in Silicon Valley and getting entrees onto the right deals. Well, Snoop also invested in Robinhood and also invested here in Reddit. Now, Snoop has also invested in a lot of cannabis things and his lungs is probably the most experienced cannabis laboratory in the history of mankind. But the point I'm making is I think Snoop should get a lot of credit for who he's connecting himself to and what he's investing in. But they came alongside these guys and it was the spin out that led to some growth because it would only be a few years later, three years later, $200 million would come in, Series C, from Andreessen Horowitz, you know, Thiel, Ron Conway, people were there following it because now we understand what it's all about. And by the way, it's a standalone company now, although the parent of uh, Condé Nast, which was I think advanced publication, advanced media, something like that, they still owned about 50%. So they're gonna make money based on what everybody else was doing. But now as a standalone company, it was able to attract leadership and drive forward. And what leadership, pray tell, did it attract? Guess what? Ellen Powell was brought in to be CEO at the time of this Series B. She lasted about a year. There is, I don't want to go through all the drama there. It's a whole book unto itself, but she let somebody go. There was a huge protest among the, the rest of the employees who she let go. There's a lot of things that went back and forth and Huffman came back to become CEO. That's right, the guys that left were back. And by the way, Ohanian had actually come back as executive chairman about the time that Ellen Powell became CEO. So guess what? Oh, the boys are back in town. So it ends up this chapter, which I call, We Got the Band Back Together. We're putting the band back together. Forget it, no way. They get the band back together, you know, Yishan Wong is like completely played out. That's why Ellen Powell became CEO at that time because he said, man, this has just burnt me out and this has been really tough to get it back here. But hats off and a lot of credit got to the Series B where now they had the gas in the tank to go forward as a standalone company and do the kind of things they want to do. They bring the leadership back. Slow, who was one of the early employees, I think he was employee number one. Right, Paul? Wasn't he employee number one? Number one. Number one. And he comes back as CTO 2017 along with the Series C, which is now a $1.8 billion valuation. And now Reddit, after all these years, is in the unicorn club and they're off and running. And there's only one thing you can say about a company that took 12 years to cross a billion dollars in valuation, finally get there is, damn, they finally did it. And they're all really running. 2019, $300 million. Sequoia's in there, 10 cents in there. We know who 10 cent is. And boom comes 2021 where everyone suddenly knows exactly who Reddit is, the ones that weren't paying attention, as Wall Street bets the entire Robin Hood saga happens. And by the way, right after that, they raise $250 million round so that their total financing to date is $800 million over 16 years. And they are now the number 18 website by traffic in the world, number seven in the United States, 46% of their traffic coming from the United States. It's over 50 if you include the UK and Canada. And now, guess what? This little comment that was made by Paul Graham, in many ways, Reddit is the front page of the internet. When you think about the subreddits and all of the, um, the administration over topics, if you remember back to any of the early days where you have topical forums and everybody, everybody can join in, well, basically the Ask Me Anything really kind of achieved scale 
thanks to Reddit. As a matter of fact, they almost broke the internet in 2012 when candidate Obama, President Obama, now a candidate to be reelected in 2012, he did an ask me anything on Reddit and they did almost break the internet because despite all the infrastructure and everything that Reddit had to handle scale, there was so much traffic on that day for that, they almost broke the internet. And so very famous for the AMAs and the things that go with it. Also, they were also famous for, you know, trying editorially to make decisions about things. And there were some right-wing sites and some, uh, you know, people that were way out their sites, maybe right and left. They were, you know, famous for one part of it. People would say censorship. But I really think they were trying to moderate and curate what was going on here at the same time that Twitter and Facebook were getting getting it in the chops uh, from the government and many other people about what they were or weren't doing. Reddit was there too, getting some criticism, but we were really, I think, through the administration and the moderation, I think Reddit was doing a better job. And that's my opinion. And they come up to Wall Street Bets, we all know what that was, where all the Wall Street Bets people come together, which showed you the power of the front page of the internet and the power of what was going on here in terms of those uh, subreddit forums, they weren't just maybe a fleeting come and go tweet because that tweet disappears and goes on down as other tweets come in. I've always found Reddit to be more sustained in its impact on me specifically in Formula One forums or news that I care about. And there's more that the BizDoc cares about than Formula One forums. I watch Wall Street Bets, and it really feels to me that there's a more curated, sustained presentation of the information and news coming through Reddit than the fleeting nature of of Twitter, although Twitter is a great place for breaking news and you can follow certain reporters there like stock reporters and things that you may are of interest to you that you want to follow them as well. But I really think that the crowdsource structure that is Reddit is really, you know, I think better than any other place to go get, you know, curated news, especially since you've got moderation. Individual tweets aren't moderated. You could have one crazy person that has 2,500 people just hit them uh, as a like, and, you know, there's not much there. Whereas a more thoughtful dialogue and discourse with moderation happening on Reddit. That's my opinion, at least. So you come to Wall Street Bets in this. Now everybody knows what Reddit is about. There was an article that said no less than this guy, Bill Gurley, sat down with one of his kids and say, take me through your use pattern and Reddit and, and explain a little bit to me. You know, I hope that's true because Gurley at Benchmark Capital, he knows a lot. He's a very knowledgeable guy. But the fact that he steps in and says, hey, take me through a little bit more and show me what's exactly happening here just shows how how far under radar they ran. And I think the reason they were so far under radar is because this first chapter, they were just part of Condé Nast until five years ago when they get, almost six years ago, they get this investment and then they become really the original promise. This could have happened here had they not sold and they raised the venture capital on follow on rounds back in 2006 and 2007. So let's step back from that. And the, you'll notice I haven't dived too deep into Wall Street bets and everything that goes with that and then the subreddits and the controversy. It's because I think there's some case studies here that are bigger for you than you me. So let's step back and look into that. First of all, don't sell too soon. They sold like a year in. Now you have to think about it, $10 million in 2006 and two guys that had, hadn't raised any venture money, they both made some pretty serious coin and put it in their pocket. But it didn't realize the promise of it. Do you think they were watching from a distance and that's why they got re-engaged like this? You bet it is. So don't sell too soon. You know, at that point, Condé Nast comes, the right answer is rather than sell to you, why don't you invest? I, that would have been, I think, the right answer there. Now we don't know how those conversations went, but I'm a firm believer that when you have an instant buyer, that that usually is a sign that should be the instant investor, not the instant buyer. Don't sell too soon. Lastly, legacy industry is legacy thinking. And so right here, I can understand why they left. If you do sell too soon and then you're bought by a legacy organization, get your carve out, your lockup period to be as short as possible because legacy companies bring legacy thinking. Do not get handcuffed for the long term. 
if you can avoid it. And lastly, you usually know better on product. So when you take a look at what happened here, it took Yishan Wong and the Ellen Powell getting them to the spin out to really start adding video and a lot of other things that have been added. And they also made a acquisition of this company, Dub Smash. In matter of fact, they hired the entire team and acquired the technology, obviously, to bring video that I just mentioned to the platform. So they're continuing to move forward. That's not an acquisition that Condé Nast or Advanced Media, who still owns part of the company, would think about. That is happening because right now we have entrepreneurship, venture investors, and the right kind of thinking that are there. And so you usually know better on product. When you give up control of the company, you also give up control of product. And when you give up control of the company, whoever is controlling the company now is going to influence product. But if you think about this, legacy industries, legacy thinking, that's where it's all going to change. So a lot of times what will happen here, you're going to lose a little bit of your dream. Fortunately for everyone that loves Reddit, these guys came back, they got venture money, and they are driving forward now. And I think despite all the controversies and the things that have happened and, you know, the moderation incidents and the things that are in there, and you could write a book about that. And as a matter of fact, this book was written about it. We Are the Nerds by Christine Legorio Chafkin. You can go check that out. A lot of people think it's a pretty good analysis of Reddit that goes far deeper than I go here. I don't endorse the book one way or the other. I think it's one voice, but I think of all the voices that have really covered Reddit, it's a pretty good read. Some people say Reddit is a train wreck. Some people say it's been a soap opera. Maybe so. I think it's a cautionary tale about selling too soon. It's a comeback story of where the original vision comes back in. And along the way, yes, there's a little bit of uh, bumps and grinds that you could talk about. But I think that we are much better off with Reddit than without it. That's what I think, but we want to know what you think. Please leave a comment down below and also subscribe and hit the bell so you find out about more great content here on Valuetainment Economics. If you like this video, check out this one just from a week ago on Robinhood. It'll give you the rest of the Wall Street bet story. Until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.